uh, primarily what uh, we chanced upon, or the, doc the, the, the document we chanced upon, is a report from the former environment minister, uh, Professor, uh, who had submitted that to cabinet or government. And he touched on very few things that included the fact that the directive and the authority of the president to fight Galamse had been totally disregarded, totally thrown to the dogs, and people within government and within the NPP party were involved actively in Galamse. And many of them plotted to frustrate his efforts in all the campaigns that had been waged against the illegal mining. So I'll give specific names captured in the report. They were talked about in different capacities. They played different roles. Some were in support of the campaign. Uh, some were, you know, the ones that were masterminding the activities to ensure that the fight against the illegal mining did not uh, yeah, And I guess myself succeed. and a lot more Ghanaians will be interested in knowing exactly who were the names he mentioned right. as being a part so of this. So if you go to our website, we have actually um, uploaded the full 36-page report there. Uh, but then the names of uh, the likes of Lord Kome, um, Charles Niteko, Frank Esiedu Bekwin, popularly known as Protozoa, Gabio Tredaku, uh, Kweku Baku Jr., you know, a renowned not, journalist. Kweku is not at the precedence, is he? Yeah, no, so these are people okay. captured in the report. Okay. So, yeah, and then there's Kojo Pong Kroma, there's Charles uh, Owusu, who's the director of operations at the Forestry Commission, and a few others. So these are people, some known, some unknown, but then according to the report from Professor Frempon Boating, they played different roles. So there are portions of the report where, for instance, he talks about... Um, when Operation uh, Vanguard was launched, for instance, there were times before they get to some mining sites, soldiers there had been withdrawn, or there were soldiers or men in uniform who were preventing some of the activities to stop the Galamse. There were places they went to and saw soldiers there who were supporting or protecting people who were undertaking uh, you know, uh, illegal mining activities. Then, if you go to some of the specifics, he says, for instance, there were times he had calls from some of these known or unknown people within government asking him to reverse some decisions he had taken against the illegal mining. But then they were told, for instance, that uh, he personally, as in Professor from Pombating, had come under severe attacks from some of these people warning him to stop. And uh, he said that there were times the chief of staff, uh, Madam uh, Frema, got information and it looked as though that she was not even aware of some of the decisions that were take, being taken behind her back. And he, uh, Professor Frimpon Boati, by the time he gets or takes a certain decision, there were calls for him to reverse or stop or suspend any action against those that were involved in the illegal mining. Um, maybe for, for reasons... Uh, as of now, that the report is new. Uh, well, it came out in 2021 when he submitted it to the president. We reached out to Professor Frimpon Boating himself, and he confirmed that he authored that report, submitted it to the president. So it is not like it's um, uh, a concocted or cooked up document and that it is actually quite uh, genuine. And if you come to a portion, like I think that was around page 12 or 13 of the report, it talks about mining activities in the western region area, where he, he, he made very interesting uh, points of note that persons within the NDC were also as actively involved in mining and some of them illegal mining, just as the NDC, uh, uh, just as the NPP in the western region, specifically that region, that's what he talked about. When he was talking about the eastern region, for instance, he said they had indication that some persons, in fact, the, uh, an MPP youth organizer in the area was mining close to the president's house in the eastern region. They went there and actually found out that it was true and that it was even affecting uh, the president's house. So they had to put in efforts to ensure that that was halted immediately. So it's quite damning, quite revealing, and uh, we are waiting to hear what exactly the presidency will say about it. But one key um, point to note is that these names that have been mentioned, or the entire report as of now, still remains an allegation. Right. So I, I have waiting. seen a letter uh, yeah. purposely coming from Kweku Baku Jr. Uh, yes. Responding so he's giving to, his response right, to, to the accusations that mm -hmm. uh, Frimpon Boateng has leveled uh, against him. So we are waiting to see what exactly government will say. You would also know that the last about two or three weeks ago, when Professor Frimpon Boateng granted some media interviews, that was when he talked about how he was frustrated in his fight against Galamse. So it was then that he mentioned that specific individuals in the seat of government 
at the presidency and in the MPP were involved. So the president heard that and asked the Ghana Police Service to immediately investigate and get to the bottom of it. So I think it was throughout that process that some of these uh, letters have come out to the public and uh, we have looked through, we have sought to be sure that it came from him. He says yes, uh, we are waiting to see what else uh, we can get from that.